Hey there, welcome back to the Vendu YouTube channel. I'm Josh, CMO of Vendu, and in today's episode of Seller's Corner, we'll be discussing reseller taxes. So we recently did a takeover on our Instagram account with an accountant named Mark Two, who you may know on social media as Not Your Dad CPA. And Mark took the time out to answer a lot of questions that were submitted by resellers. So we wanted to compile all those answers for you here and where Mark shared some really, really helpful and insightful information as resellers prepare for tax season. So make sure to take advantage of all this information. Before we start, feel free to like, share and subscribe to, the, to our channel and make sure to pass this information on to any resellers that could benefit from it. Thank you. Hey everyone, Mark Two here, hacked into Vendu's account to share some tax tips and knowledge with you today. And this is a good first question to start with. So if you sell stuff online, uh, the IRS is typically going to consider that to be a form of self-employment income. So you're going to report self-employment on your tax return. And that goes on a Schedule C of your 1040 individual income tax return. So if you're using TurboTax or something to prepare your own taxes, you're going to want to get the self-employed version. So yeah, you'll need your sales, your expenses, basically like a profit and loss summary. And that all goes on your Schedule C. So when and why should we file taxes for our online shops? And I think the when is a little bit easier than the why. So technically on that first dollar of, of sale that you make, you're, uh, the IRS wants you to report that. Um, you know, there are some instances where you're, you're below certain thresholds, but in general, just plan on reporting and paying taxes on your reselling earnings. Now, if you have a loss, you might say, well, you know, you, you may not technically, technically have to report that because it's a loss, but you should report it because it's only going to benefit you. That loss is going to offset other income that you have. As far as why pay taxes on it, um, you know, you don't want to get a letter from the IRS. You know, it's, it's just, uh, just the rule. Holding taxes, it's possible that those withholdings might be enough to cover any taxes due from the reselling. But if it's not enough, then you'll probably have to either withhold more or make those quarterly estimated taxes. And there are a couple other rules around it, but, but that's the general idea. So I think what this question is asking is, um, outside of the fees that are already deducted before I get my payouts from eBay, do I also take other deductions? I might be wrong, but it's it's still a, a, a good question. And um, so yeah, when, when you are selling online, you are a, you're, you're a small business, you're a sole proprietorship at the beginning by default, and you have deductions. You purchase inventory, you purchase supplies, you might have software, your, your Vendu subscription is deductible. So those are all deductions that reduce your taxable income. So um, yeah, definitely take advantage of, of any business deduction out there and that's uh, you know some, something worthwhile to educate yourself on. So if you're using Vendu and if you're uh, correctly putting in the different shipping costs and platform fees and all that when you sell a product, you can go back and get a report for any time period. So you would just generate a report for the year, you know, January through December, and then you can get your sales, you can get your platform fees, you can get your cost of goods sold, all that stuff. So, so it can be pretty helpful in preparing your taxes. And then any other fees outside of Vendu, like just, you know, random supplies or, or other software subscriptions that you're using, um, those would all have to be on top of that. But it's, but it's a really good starting point to get those, those first pieces of information. All right, change of scenery. I come out here when I need to be refreshed a little bit, but yeah, you can write off a Vendu as a deduction. So yeah, pretty much anything, any expense that you're incurring as part of the operation of your business is gonna be deductible or at least partially deductible. And that includes software subscriptions, uh, tools like Vendu, um, my tax course, uh, where you can learn all about more deductions, but, but yeah, definitely deduct that. Okay, so the IRS wants you to have both a record and some type of documentary evidence or substantiation. So the fact that you have your logbook, that's like your record. And an, a, another example of a record could be like, uh, you know, bookkeeping software, you know, I guess Vendu could be, be a type of record. Um, and then they want you to have some type of evidence, some type of substantiation that backs that up. So usually that's going to be a receipt. So yeah, you should save your receipts, although you don't necessarily have to keep the physical copy. You can always just scan it or take a picture and then save it in a file and forget about it. 
Yeah, so you can still claim dependents as a reseller. So that's separate. I mean, the dependents portion really goes on the, uh, like on the face of your 1040 individual tax return. The reselling for most of us as sole proprietors or single member LLCs, that goes on a, a Schedule C. So it's a separate schedule. It's part of the same return, but the dependent piece really factors in uh, in another section. But so yeah, the, the reselling doesn't really change anything. So do you need to track when inventory sells or can you just use the cash in cash out method? So the, the, that's cash in cash out. That's basically cash basis. That means when you receive cash, you recognize income. When you spend cash, you recognize an expense. And historically inventory has always been on the accrual method, which means you don't sell it. I mean, you don't deduct it until you sell it. Uh, but there was some legislation a few years ago that sort of opened the door to potentially using the cash method for inventory, which means that which means deducting it when you sell it. Uh, but they actually just released guidance in January that pretty much closes the door on that for the most part. I still have to dive into it, and I'm, I'm going to be talking about that in the coming months. So this is a good question. Let me first start by saying that you are a sole proprietorship by default. That's just what the IRS considers you to be if you start selling. Uh, there's no need to like register anything formally. They consider you to be a business, a sole proprietorship. So the next step is typically going to be an LLC. And the reason you would do that is for liability, per, uh, liability reasons, mainly, you know, liability protection, but the tax, the tax implications aren't really any different than a sole proprietorship where you could potentially have some tax savings is if you then go from that LLC to an S corp and S corps don't don't uh, have self-employment tax on the profits. Uh, the one thing though is that S-Corps, they, they don't exist independently by themselves. They kind of have to be layered on to an LLC or to a partnership or to a C-Corp. So there's a few ways you can account for costs of goods sold on large lots. So if you, if you want to track everything individually, then just take the average. I mean, if the items are pretty similar, um, just, just take the average of what you spend, just divide the number of items you purchase into the total number, into the total dollar amount, and then have that be your cost. If you're not so concerned with tracking things individually, just, just use an average. Um, so like I have a, an average cost of goods sold inventory tracker you can use. Uh, but yeah, instead of tracking everything individually, you can just do it at, at a higher level. And, and I have a video linked on that spreadsheet that, that shows you the specifics of how to do that. But, the, but there is flexibility. Mm -hmm.